So did you guys see Raw? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so they opened up with Cody. And, you know, but, I mean, bro, they, they said you, everything. Hey, they hey, Disco, I'm sorry. Bro. Had you heard about the numbers yet? Oh, for Raw? What were they? Yeah. You'll enjoy. You'll enjoy. Look at this spike here. See that? Is that the punk segment? Yeah. yeah. So that, that would go along with what you said before about, look, that's that's 400,000 extra viewers there from the previous segment to, to jump on the watch punk. Yeah. Wow, they had more than The Rock and... Yeah. Well, they didn't, but The Rock wasn't advertised. Yeah. So I think there was definitely a lot of... Uh, yeah, and, and the other... Buzz, when you're, yeah, right, yeah. And Punk was at nine, and those guys were at the end of the show. Maybe people right. went to bed. Okay, so, so basically, the Cody comes out, and he's just kind of... You know, he's, he's he's selling the match again, and out of nowhere, because he wasn't advertised to show The Rock's music hits, and the people go... Um, and The Rock basically just comes... This is all just theater, okay? Because The Rock just came in, just, just stood... They just stood right across from each other. They st- stood there staring at each other, just waiting for the crowd to just respond. Like, you know, there was Rocky Sucks chance and Cody's chance, you know, just he, they, they worked the chance. And then Rock slowly walked up to him and whispered in his ear and then left the ring. And they go, What did he say to him? Like, was that, that was the thing. Oh, what'd you, what'd you think of the second? Go ahead. A great visual, which shows the hold that he has on the crowd when everybody was painting to the, pointing to the WrestleMania sign with Cody. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I just can see these same people turning on him in a year or two. Uh, Cody, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, it's happened before. I just hope that this isn't like the devil storyline in AW, where you know at the end you were like, "Really, this is who it is." I hope whatever he whispered into his ear is not whack, because to me, it's become one of the strongest components of the story. You know, he's whispered well, in you, his you, ear you, twice. Yeah, but you get the the the, the gimmick of a, by the end of the show what he whispered in his ear. Do you know what he whispered in his ear? No. Okay, I'll tell you. Well, we get to. I'll tell you. All right. Um, so then we go to the show. Bring a shape woman for his match, and then we go to a Jackie Redmond catches up with the Rock and asks him what, what, what he said to Cody Rhodes. He said, "Go ask Cody Rhodes." Then they show the Judgment Day. Well, you, you know I, I, I forgot. I wanted to. I want to. I, there's two things that Cody said that I loved. He said, mm-hmm. "Reigns, he acts part of a champion every week." No, no, I have to act a part of a champion because a real champion is not around. I like that. Right. And then he also said, and I didn't even know what he meant. I actually read it on Twitter. Somebody explained it. He said, this city should know me when I make a bet. I keep a promise, which he's alluding to all out when they sold out in Chicago. Remember like right, right. Yeah, minutes or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't catch it when he said it. Yeah. Yeah. So the hell of a deal. Yeah. Um, a hell of a deal. <laughs> so, so they show the, uh, Everybody, the Judgment Day is um, uh, firing up uh, JD B. Jenner to take care of a uh, ricochet, and and uh, what's his name? Uh, J- a priest says he has a plan for for a, like for, for their strategy going into WrestleMania. Okay, so they do JD McDonough versus Ricochet. Dominic tries to interfere, gets kicked out from out of ringside, and that leads to McDonough getting beat by Ricochet with a great a shooting star press onto a standing guy. Yeah, perfectly done, um, bro. Let me yeah. just say this. This was a really good match because I'm a big Ricochet fan. And the commentary did an ex- excellent job putting over Ricochet and his move sets, right? right? But, bro, McDonough took that finish perfectly. And what a great worker. He was taking some really good bumps, you know? Uh, now, with Ricochet, are you guys, after five years, finally going to get behind this guy or not? Do we have a sigh emoji or sigh sound, Joe? No, no, not no, we get it. I'll we got the it. yeah. Go ahead. <sighs> <laughs> and so, and Good. and uh, let me just give JD McDonough a little advice. Keep that Judgment Day rub because if they cut you and you go solo with all this star power, you're gonna get lost in the shuffle. Right. But good, um, worker, good worker. Right. So then we go to uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, they show Punk walking backstage. They show Jey Uso arriving earlier in the day. This is this is this shows you how hot they are, right? Cole, uh, Michael Cole said this was the eleventh straight sellout on the road to WrestleMania. Nah, I saw it. No, they even had it in a graphic. Yeah, yeah, bro. Did killing, you hear? Right? Did you hear McAfee? What did he say? He said even on the hard camera side. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. McAfee's got some little dibs there. I mean, here and there, like he, he likes, yeah. likes you know need, needling uh, people. So this so punk comes out. Um, he had his brace on, and uh, he grabbed a mic and hopped on the broadcast table, held the mic while the rest of the crew got the shot of WrestleMania sign behind him. 
And you know, a lot of things you want to say and a lot of business to get to. So the fan the fans cheered and Punk said, People are asking if you'll be WrestleMania. He says yes. He says elbow's not hundred percent, but we're on Netflix. We're not on Netflix yet, so I apologize. April knows what I'm talking about. Deluding to his girl. Punk said people made suggestions he code for WrestleMania. He said he didn't know. He said ten years ago he would have thought it was beneath him, but now he just wants to be in front of the people. Punk brought up the idea of being a referee. That's there was a match that needed the most impartial referee. And Punk said there are a lot of people who talk about him and needed to talk. He said there are a lot of people who talk about him and need to talk about and need to talk about him. Then Punk pointed to McAfee. Punk said he's not a daily listener because he listens to the experience in the drive through Jim Cornette's podcast. <laughs> Punk said Mac- McAfee had Roman Reigns on his podcast. And Punk wanted to explain what Reigns did he say about Jim Cornette's podcast. I don't even he remember. He says I listen to the experience of the drive through this Jim Cornette's podcast. Why would he say that? And he listens to Jim Cornette's podcast. But what was and the content? He got, and he actually got online heat for this from fans that don't like Jim Cornette. How hysterical is that? Oh, yeah. So Punk said, uh, uh, I wonder why Reigns brought him up. And Punk said Reigns earned the right and he respected it. But Punk said they expected to see Reigns while he's on his way down the mountain and while Punk is climbing the mountain. Punk brought up Seth Rollins, said he's magically taller than he is, is now that he wears high heels. And Punk said Rollins has laughed at him for paying the price of being a pro wrestler since he was 15. And Punk said maybe Rollins has earned the right, but it's kind of funny coming from someone with two bad knees. Punk said The Rock is someone who hasn't said a word about it. And Punk says he'd like to think it's because 10 years ago he came face to face with the Second City Saint and realized that his arms are too short to box with God. And Punk brought up Drew McIntyre. So he doesn't live on the internet. He said, he said that when you have a problem in Chicago, you handle it face to face like a man. His music hits. So Drew comes out and told the the people, the, told the production truck to stop, turn off the stupid song. Nobody wants to hear it. Punk said he wasn't medically clear, but he wasn't looking to have a wrestling match. Why don't you get your in here? I thought that was weird. That's weird. Like he's he's talking all tough and he's had it. He's hurt, you know. And the last time they were together, he hurt his. You know, Drew, Drew beat him up and and hurt his arm more. I suppose. The McIntyre stood on the stage and he would love to get in the ring, but the last time they were in the ring together, he stomped his arm and he deserved it. Then Punk asked if he was a Scottish psychopath and a kilt or a hairnet troll in a skirt. McIntyre says 2024 and Punk can get canceled for talk like that. McIntyre made his way to ringside and showed off his Punk inspired t shirts, and Punk said he never had to put another man's name on a shirt to sell it. The McIntyre tore off one of his shirts and said he struggled to get out of it because of his biceps, which is something Punk probably never had an issue with. Hmm. McIntyre climbed on the broadcast table and said Punk doesn't drink or do drugs and he spends all of his time in rehab. The McIntyre said he doesn't hate Punk. Punk actually completes him. McIntyre spoke about how to give up Punk helps him in the gym and when he won the elimination chamber. Then Punk told McIntyre to get in the ring. McIntyre said Punk probably had a weapon and would try to take him out before WrestleMania. Then Punk laid down in the ring. The McIntyre saw the broadcast table with his legs crossed. The McIntyre boasted that he's always been the chosen one. Punk dared McIntyre to say who dubbed him the chosen one. Punk said it wasn't the people. McIntyre told Punk to get all out because it would be months before he would be back in the ring. And McIntyre suggested Punk be the guest commentator at WrestleMania so he could see him win the championship. Now, this was going on forever, this exchange. And now Seth Rollins comes out. So this is going to go on even longer. <laughs> so, did you, did you, this is the longest segment I've ever had to read. Okay. Mm. Well, basically, Rollins came out and, uh, you know, said the base he could be the referee or do, do whatever. And Rollins asked Punk if he wanted to know what he thought. Punk said, uh, Punk said to be fair, he didn't think he could be objective. Was censored when he called Rollins and McIntyre to get a lot of a lot of censoring on his show. Yeah. The Rollins asked Punk if he wanted to know what he thought. Nope, said Punk because he didn't want to be the referee. Rollins said that was ironic because he doesn't think anything of him and he hasn't crossed his mind since the last time they were in the ring together. And Rollins said Punk is a non factor. It doesn't matter if he wants to be on commentary or the referee for the title match. The Rollins said Punk needs him to have a moment at WrestleMania. Rollins said he likes the idea of Punk being on commentary, calling his finest hour. Rollins said the way things are going for Punk is as close to a championship match we get. And Rollins told Punk the one thing he needs him to do is stay out of his way. And Punk said it was decided. Punk said he would sit in on commentary. And Punk said he would do something that the company couldn't do during his 10-year absence by making Rollins and McIntyre interesting. Punk left the ring and his music playing with McIntyre called for it to stop. And said Punk isn't in this match. It doesn't get the last word. McIntyre said Punk is obsessed with him, and McIntyre said he's living in Punk's dream, and Punk is his number one stand. McIntyre ended the ring, continued to jog Punk until Rollins super kicked McIntyre, then followed up by giving them a stomp, and then he turned to soak with the Punk, who was watching from the entrance of him, and Rollins left the ring and walked right past Punk while McIntyre sold in the ring. What did you think? Well, feel it was too long. Yeah, it took five minutes to just read. And both is your, uh, yeah, did you get your mic up, Rod? Yeah, you did. Yes, it was too long. You had three great talkers. I mean, look at the rating they popped. Yep. And I just have a feeling that these guys generally don't like each other. And the writing staff has taken advantage of that and maybe brought them together and said, look, you guys aren't best friends, but you're not enemies either. Obviously, there's some friction or acrimony here. 
Let's make your promos different. You guys shoot on each other, but no hurt feelings. No, you know what I'm saying? Because this just sounds different and edgier and not scripted. And you know what I'm saying? More personal. Yeah, more personal. And who would have thought that in the last three weeks, we hear Rock talking about La Greca, this guy talking about Jim Cornette. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, so um, much like when MJF referenced disco last year. Right. And um, uh, and bro, I couldn't believe when Punk said, "Why don't you mention his name?" When he was talking about McMahon, I was yeah. like, "That's that's very edgy." So I'm enjoying this, even though it was too long. Right. Uh, and and let me just say one more thing. I don't know if you noticed this, but when he came out, obviously he was coming out to announce he was an, a commentator. Okay. Okay. Right. But he kind of went into business for himself, and he said. I don't know. Maybe if you're looking for somebody impartial, you might want a referee. And the people were like, yeah, f- commentator, referee, you know? And it started and, referee chain, didn't it? Right, exactly. And I was thinking, <laughs> Punk, it got over. Why don't you just ad lib and say, I'm going to be the referee. And when you go backstage and they go, why do you say that? I go, bro, that's what the people want me to be. Right. I j- actually did your job for you. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So they have a Nakamura. Uh, Nakamura's kind of pro and Jey Uso. He's wrestling later in the show. Uh, well, they've got to give Nakamura victory. Some, you know, one of these days. Not tonight. You know not it tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely <laughs> so not. Begin, Candice LeRae against Ivy Nile, and Candice LeRae is with Indy Hartwell. And the gimmick here is that Candice LeRae is subtly turning heel, and and uh, uh, Indy Hartwell is kind of upset with with her actions because. She cheated and was all excited that she beat uh, Ivy Nile and uh, and Indy Harwell was just like kind of like get, did you the get the whole thing was like three minutes. I'm yeah, asking a question. Right. Did you see this? Yeah, but okay. there was like a snap of the did finger. Did you get the open. vibe that she was upset? Because I got the vibe like, what are you doing? And I'm thinking yeah, exactly. Myself, like, well, that's like two weeks, she's done heel. You're still wondering what she's doing, right? Yeah, that's a little. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that just because of that. I don't know how many people picked up on it. But this match was really short, so I'm guaranteeing you either Cody and Rock or CM Punk or both went long. Not that uh-huh. we needed to see a longer the two minutes. So, so this was this was good TV coming up. Okay, so they showed um they showed Kofi and Xavier were, were backstage and they're they're jawing a little bit, you know, in a friendly way, but professionally kind of like you know ragging on each other. Big Gargano and Ciampa. Then Paul Heyman could be shown talking to Drew in the back. That was great. The that was is- great. The truth that Miz showed up and said they would be on commentary for their match coming up, right? Um, I kind of like this. It was kind of like, yo, these these are two babyface <laughs> tag teams and they're going to be wrestling each other. And they showed them kind of jawing at each other a little bit to create a little bit of tension for, for the Yeah, a little chirping back and forth. Just a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they, they had the match at, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, so, the judgment, so the judgment day comes out and they're, they're just attacking everybody. Right. And they're, they're just laying everybody out, but the... the, 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 the so they laid out all the guys in the ring. Miz hits the ring. Right. Starts fighting him up, but then they put him down. Right. And they all come over to Truth, who's a comment, who's on the commentary desk, and he's calling for security. He's just kind of saying the character, like he's trying to act like he doesn't know what's going on. No, the best part, the but, best part is when he said, "Let's go to commercial break." Let's go to commercial <laughs> <Yeah>. break. <laughs> you know, he's trying to like, there they go. But then they throw him in the ring. But bro, the biggest pop of the segment was he started fighting back on him. Yeah. Well, he and like, when over. he was fighting back, the people were popping. Yeah, right. You know, he was like, yeah, they like him. The old school, the he's a likable Luchy character. Feed, they're feeding him, boo, boo, you know. And uh, but then they took him down and they laid them all out and they stood tall at the end with the with, with the heat at the end. Um, this was actually very well done. I saw. Yeah. What you think of this? I just thought, well, New Day and Gargano, all all four of them are good workers, but they're kind of boring right now. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't invested till they got jumped. Right. You know, I thought the run in made it. Um. So then they go to Cody Rhodes. He was interviewed by Jackie Redman, and, and uh, she asked him what The Rock told him, or whis- whispered to him. Cody said it wasn't something he wanted to repeat, but it was a promise The Rock can't keep. Okay, um, So they hyped up, oh, this is a match you're very excited for. Your boy Andrade against your favorite wrestler, Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. This didn't make it to Hulu, and neither did the Gunther promo. Did not make it to Hulu. Gunther said he doesn't believe Sami Zayn can beat him at WrestleMania, nor does he believe Zayn can beat Bronson Reed. And Kelly has Gunther would be scouting Zane during his match with Reed. And Gunther repeated that he doesn't believe Zane can beat him. So they do Andrade versus Leonardo da Vinci. Take a while to guess who won this. Right. Andrade. Um, and the finishing movie is called The Message. 
It's so, you know, neck breaking move. Here's the only thing that I I, I want to comment about this match because Andrade seems to be in a weird place. And um, why would you be interested? You know, like he has no rivalry. He hasn't had no in ring big time promo, and they haven't treated him like a big deal coming back. And and he's always talking with Judgment Day, which makes you think he right. might be a heel. So is he a heel or is he a face? You know what I'm saying? I think we're not really going to see what they're going to do with him until after WrestleMania. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Cole announced that he'll be co-hosting the Pat McAfee show on really? April 5th when Triple H and Cody Rhodes will be the guests. Interesting. Yeah. Michael um, Cole actually got a big pop when CM Punk mentioned him. Yeah. So we did we get a, uh, a Rhea Ripley and Dom come out for a promo. Um, she's just bragging on uh, Becky. Becky comes out. Uh, Rhea starts talking about Becky's kid. Becky didn't like it. Um, Becky said there's nothing respectful about Ripley. She said neither one of them would be the same again after WrestleMania. And she threw her mic aside and Ripley did the same. And they jawed at one another until Dom stepped in. And then Becky hit Dom with a pretty good shoot punch right in the jaw. Did you see this, yeah, Tony? Yes. yes. Slow motion. And, and I, had to, I actually thought maybe she did connect. No, she did connect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she 100% connected, but it wasn't yeah. like a, you know, it was a good shot. You know, Dom had to eat a good shot there. Uh but basic, basically, um, uh, she punched him, and then uh, then her and Ripley chat had a pretty good look of brawl here, right? And Very they, good they kept brawling and pull apart and brawling, but they looked, they looked, but like, but Be- Becky brings it in the brawl because she looks yeah. like she's trying to fight for real. So this, this is actually pretty. Yeah, good. Rhea brought it too. The punch was great. I thought. Yeah. What did you think of the second? Well, I thought that you know, I'm a guy, bro, and and. and when you, you know, she was talking about like her dad not meeting her daughter and she was like go, almost crying and screaming. And I'm like, all right, well, big deal. You know, like, do we know these people? But anyways, um, uh, but the fans liked it. You know, they were into Becky. She was very emotional. This was a good spirited, really good promo. Um, and then I also like the the and I like how have to ha- how they have to bring Dom into the ring to remind people she's a heel, but they cheer her nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like when Lynch said that Ripley doesn't wrestle on Raw anymore, and um, uh, and she was like, "Yeah, I don't have to get in the ring every week like you do. I just put a picture of myself on online and you know watch the pervs eat it up." You know, mm-hmm. and the other girl was like, "Well, I don't have to show my." I bust my ring, like some really good lines you don't usually hear for women. Well, yeah, because did you see that Rhea was was doing the stink face on a couple of house shows that that was all over Twitter and everything, you know, people sharing a lot of that. So we go, um, uh, we go backstage and Sami Zayn uh, spotted Chad Gable, and Gable uh, ended this conversation with Maxine Dupree and came over to Zayn. And Zayna uh, said, I want to talk about how they ended their conversation last week. And Zayn said it was fine because Gable and Gunther both think he can beat Gunther. Zayn said Gunther doesn't think he can beat Bronson Reed. Zayn said the match is about making Gunther eat his words. And Gable said this wasn't about Gunther, who wanted to take control and ruin Zayn's focus. Gable told Zayn to get his head out of his He conceded that Gable was right and told him that he knew what he needed to do. And then Zayn told Gable he appreciated what he said, and they shook hands. Um, so then Sami Zayn goes out and no, there was actually no doubt who was going to win this match. He goes out and beat Bronson Reed in nine minutes. What do you think about this whole little segment here? Uh, did Bronson Reed win? No, Sami Zayn won. Oh, Bronson Reed beat him, yeah. Just to make it a Hulu. I, I was assuming that this thing was going to end with Sami Boy. Zayn beating Bronson Reed, so I didn't even bother like... No, because what, because what they're doing is, if you saw that Gable said, he's playing mind games with you. And he right. came out during the match and then he turned around I would just try to get okay. right, yeah, but I'm makes, thinking to myself, yeah. everybody gets distracted. Sammy ain't the only yeah. one, you know. Right. So, but I have a feeling that after all these losses and and bro, here's very weird. There's no way you've been watching WWE as long as I have. There's no way McMahon would have had a guy that's going into WrestleMania with a match and one that isn't, and have that other and have the one that isn't beat the guy that is. Right. Like, that was a big surprise to me, and it shows a different type of thinking, which, hey, I like it. It's different. Um, and, and I think that Gunther is probably going to lose to Sammy so they can give Sammy all his heat back, and I think Sammy will do something to get into Gunther's head to kind of reverse it on him to win. That's just a prediction, obviously. Um. So then uh, Jey Uso is doing a little promo about Nakamura, um, and then Solo and Jimmy show up because he got right in his face, and he says... And Jimmy said, no yeet. 
Yeah. Right. Um, so Sami Zayn was upset backstage. G- Gable approached him and Gates. They said he knew what Gunther was doing. and He still let him in. He gave us that this is what Gunther does. He gave us this more than physical physicality. Of Gunther is mental. And Gable told Zayn he needs to take a different approach. He said they could talk about it. Zayn was receptive. Um, so then they go to J- Jay Uso uh, is getting ready for his match, and Seth Rollins showed up and told Jay that he and Cody Rhodes had his back and said he did. He said he doesn't feel comfortable. Something's not right tonight. Right. So they do Jay Uso versus uh, Nakamura. <laughs> Jay beats him. After the match, oh, oh, by the way, so the, so the, the bloodline tried to interfere, and Seth and Cody come out. So there's, there's brawling in ringside while the match is still going on in the ring, okay? And uh, they show the brawl. They're brawling backstage now, and after the match, they show uh, Cody has Jimmy Uso, and he's beat him up in a backstage area. And the Rock shows up, sort of beating the out of him, hitting him with trash cans and trash talking. Get up, boy. The Rock is the final boss. You want to run your mouth? You want to be a hero? Terry Collins hustling like a truck driver. He beat the out of him out in the rain. Uh, he bloodied him, and he took a belt that said Mama Rhodes on it, and he wiped Cody's blood on the belt that said Mama Rhodes. And, if, and the internet sluice Cody is. Earlier in the show, Rock whispered his ear, and the lip readers uh, said, he says, tonight I'm going to make you bleed, and walked off. That's what he had said to Cody earlier in the show. And he actually made him bleed. And they beat him up and get good heat on him here at the end. Everybody's saying this is a, this reminded them of like the attitude era. Yeah. It's kind of like having sure. that attitude because there's a lot of cussing. The Rock said, Yeah, he oh, did. He right. did. This is what happens he, when you me or something. So that's, I mean, the, I mean, yo, at some point. Yeah, but that, that, gives it, it, that, that, gives it, that gives it good credibility because they have to bleep out its bad words. You right. Know what I'm and, they made it sound kind of real. And, they and, never, and when have you ever seen The Rock talk like that? Hardly ever. Right, Just movies, you know. Right. <laughs> right. So, you know what? It was funny too because remember we talked about that show, The Regular Guys. Yeah, where we're the, they were the cops. Yeah, The Rock's kind of persona is kind of like the cop in that movie. Like lots of people around. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, the other guys, the other guys. The other guys. Yeah, yeah, right, the other guys. Right, yeah, the Rock yeah. was in that movie. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's oh, oh, okay, okay. Was kind of heel. It was like a heel cop. Yeah, we're like real arrogant, like you right. know, like that's kind of you know, it's custom. Now yeah. let me just say one thing that I mega popped on, bro. I love when they were backstage, and then Rock just kind of shows up because you didn't right. think he was probably going to show up anymore, right? Right, right. He shows up backstage, beats the out of him, then takes him out and slams his face against the truck, yeah, until he bleeds, and it looked great because, and I'm not hating, just stating. Unlike AEW, that they would do it every week, sometimes for no f- reason whatsoever. Right. This had a purpose. This back. had a reason. I get right. This this right. had a yeah. purpose, and it was effective. Right. You know, very effective. This was yeah. great. This was cool. great. Yeah. yeah. Now, a lot of people have been pointing out The Rock not putting up the one. He put up like an L or something, and maybe he's secretly with Cody. But after that segment, I, I don't know how they could possibly do that. Right. What it's like? Wait, oh, you yeah. guys were in cahoots, but you let him be. You? I yeah. think people just looking into the thing too much about the, the rock doing the thing with the with the thumb out. Yeah, and I think because I saw Heyman, a screenshot of the second time he did it, the eye Heyman gave him a side eye. Like, what is he doing? That, that you know? I, I disagree with that. I, I, you couldn't look at that and think that like that was like an iconic moment where he was like they wanted everybody to look at him staring at the thing. You know that that's what I. Thought you don't think that. just the no, lucky shot? What's a big deal? Like like this? Seriously, Joe, think about this. I put my index finger in the air. All right. But I put my index finger in the air, but I still have means with my, my thumbs extended. What? what, what like, I'm not saying it's a big deal. I'm saying. From that. <laughs> like, what would that be? Like, oh, it's like a, what is it, like, like Illuminati symbolism? Well, the thing <laughs> is, here's, 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 what, here's what I want to say. That, yeah. He did it twice, right? Because mm-hmm. the first time I thought big deal. Then he did it again. I was like, wait a minute. And then uh, you got to remember that guy that works for him. What's his Brian name? Gewertz. Brian Gewertz. He seems like the type of guy who probably mines through all the comments and he's like, Hey, people are saying this about you. You know what right. I'm saying? So right. I don't doubt it. Oh, yeah. 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 I bet you the rock does too. Yeah. Right. I mean, no, we can't. Right. It seems like it, the rock he, was, he, doesn't he, like responded to, uh, he responded to an observer comment the other day. Like, yeah. Something. You know, so he rock does. Got, I, I would not doubt if rock's reading me. Con- I, actually, I don't know if he's got time to read the wrestling comment section though. With all the, Go. Like no, he's he probably in the that. Hollywood comment section, but like you know, yeah, but maybe you're right. Gwers is probably like pointing him out. If he, like, he's on the board now, WWE's part of his sphere of uh, true, jobs. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. Would that be great if The Rock became just like a regular character on that show? You know, like kind of like Brock. 
like four times a year. He comes in and that does like three great. to four weeks. He's doing great. He's doing great. Yeah. Doing great Why work. wouldn't he? Right. Like seriously, this is your company. Bro, the You're other the day, director. like, do you keep the brand alive? Like with with your presence on Bro, there. The you other know? day, I listened to this. I was uh, I was looking at O'Shea's Jackson's uh, mm-hmm. comments, right? And, and one of the guy goes, he goes, "The Rock has always sucked, and he still does." And I'm like, "How could you say what? he always sucked?" Well, those are just stupid people, you know. I'll I'll give you I'll, this. I'll counterpoint for you because I like. He came back a couple times before there this to no feud with, to feud with Cena, and I'm saying I wasn't I wasn't blown away by him then, but I was. this come this comeback I am. Bro, more he so. this is his best comeback. Cena. Oh, no, he me, destroyed me... Cena with the cereal and the jorts and every, he destroyed Cena, bro. Yeah. Cena couldn't what? even hang with him. Let's come let me on. tell you too. I like and this is another thing. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're at, the, they're at the peak. Like, like they're off the chain right now in production quality. Everything, everything. But just the way they pr- produce the guy's entrance, right? As like this, this godlike well, figure that shows up. Like, you've got, like, where lightning, you've got a, like electric, you know, right. like yeah. You've got the real shoot. You know, probably most exciting character in the history of WWE, arguably, right? One, probably the best promo guy, okay, and a Hollywood actor, yeah. Uh, backstage with Cody, who's very professional, and and what he does is very credible. One of the most powerful men in entertainment. And then, right, so you get these great <laughs> actors, right? Yeah, these great entertainers, performers, second generation son, with that type of production, and all the smart people and the writers that bro, it's they're just hitting dude, home run dude, after just home the run. way they they produce. They used to do this back in the day, and this is a great effect, but they 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 revamped it, right? Is when you're producing the guy, you're calling him the most electrifying man, and, and they're, they're calling him, not in sports entertainment. Cole says he's the most electrifying man in entertainment. Right. Period. Right. The way they produce that, where he comes out, there's like electricity on the screen, right. you know, stuff for right. and then they light him to where he looks like he's glowing with electricity. You know, the way he's lit. Yeah. You know, it's bro. It's just like just and then look at him. Lock, come out with with the, the production quality. He just looks like. You, you're going star, like how what can he I is. change the channel? This guy's coming out. Some important going to happen here. You know, right? I mean, am I right? Like yeah. he's he's a huge ratings guy. You know, like, much like Roman Reigns learned, and I don't know if he learned it from The Rock. Rock does a superstar entrance. Yeah. slow, takes yeah. time, stops. Because I remember Scott Hall always used to tell me, yeah. he goes, "Bro, don't run out there. Take your time. Right. It's a free commercial." Right. And I was like, "Yeah, he's right." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because too, this, this is just this is common sense. If you're getting over, okay, and like yeah. what you would do, you would go to the announcer before the show today and stuff today, and you would mention something you'd like him to say in commentary. Right. You take your time on your ring entrance, and what are the announcers doing? They're talking about you, and they're right. telling like you know, but that's everybody these days can't wait to get to the ring to go start their match so fast because they've they've got nine hundred things to do in twelve minutes, like, and they have to hurry up and get to the ring, and like nobody knows anything about them, you know. So like, yeah, that's that that's they, they get it, you know. So all right, so uh, the, this show is actually I, I like this show, even yeah. though I will say this, I thought. You, you know, you like you, you said the segment with Drew and Seth and them was kind of like more raw and more real. Yeah, I th- I thought it was it was a little choppy at times. But That's all right. That, That's what makes it, was, it right, good. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, they're they're tra- talking over each other, trying to get the word. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like I speak, then you speak, then I. No, they were interrupting each other and throwing jabs. Like, oh, this is a PG show, and watch yourself, you might get canceled. And oh, why don't you say, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was yeah. a lot of ad libbing which was good because they all three can do it and and the anticipation of what drew has been doing on tv every week and punk and and them and them previewing that we're gonna have punk's gonna be on bro that's that's what you do you have the guy burying the guy for for like like six eight eight weeks right then we announce punk is going to be in chicago in chicago and bro you build it up and right. you announce it, and you promote it, right? And then when Punk shows on the show, look look at the spike in ratings you get. Like, oh gosh, this is going to be really good because Punk and right. McIntyre are going to have a verbal. Ch- Brother, just doing everything right, you know. So, right. Right. yeah. All, right. All so, you can uh, do is chef's kiss and give them their props. Yeah, they're they're providing good entertaining TV, leading to WrestleMania. I think I think WrestleMania is going to be unbelievable this year. Yeah, they have to pull out something. Like everything's been so 
Like, yeah, there's you know, gonna be a surprise. There's gonna yeah, be yeah. somebody's gonna come back. Somebody's gonna turn on somebody. The like, first yeah, ever, they're the best. The first TKO WrestleMania, and you know they're gonna want to like they've been. They right. probably had the, this this earmark. Like, imagine if we could do WrestleMania. They're probably saying it in in the boardroom meeting, like like try to you know, like and then they get right. The imagine if if yeah. a, if a special referee was Conor McGregor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Right. And he got you know, into a pull apart with somebody. Yeah. One yeah. one thing. Are they doing Owens versus um, Paul? No, Owens, Paul, and Orton three way. Uh, yeah, I would get see if you get Paul's brother involved, and then have Tyson on the other side of the ring or something too. Add a little star power to it. Or you maybe know, even right? better than that, you on one side and Billy Body on the other. Nothing. We're gonna be in the same <laughs> city. Manning is his referee. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's been our. Uh, that's been our raw review. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> Boom. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh, Thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.